everybody, it is time. Let's talk about episode 3 of Game of Thrones season 6, Oathbreaker. This episode was insane. I was on the edge of my seat the entire time while watching it, especially when it starts off and we see Jon Snow alive. He is an emotional wreck. We have Davos, Melisandre, and everyone asking him what he saw, what went down when he died, and he said he saw nothing. Absolutely nothing. Just, can you imagine, can you imagine dying, seeing nothing, coming back, and knowing that is what is waiting for you and all of those that you love on the other side? So right off when John is brought back, he is back in command and having to deal with the traitors, those who killed him. And it is an absolute mess. He just doesn't know how to go back and be the Lord Commander again. Now, I'm going to come back to Jon Snow, but first, let's talk about what went down with all the other characters in this episode because a lot happened. One of the next things we see in this episode is an incredible flashback scene that we all were waiting for. It is the Tower of Joy flashback scene. We see the Kingsguard of Rhaegar Targaryen who are supposed to be protecting him, but they are guarding this tower that Lyanna Stark is in. And that just does not make sense. Ned and his men arrive. Hal and Reed is one of the men. This flashback is being seen by Bran and the Blood Raven. And Bran has no idea why he's seeing this. He does not understand the significance of what is going down right here, but I'm sure many of us really do. And of course, they do not explain it all. Of course, they're not going to give that to us in this one episode because we just got John back and they're not going to just give this to us right away, even though they should. In this entire scene, Ned eventually defeats them and then we see Ned hear Lyanna scream. And when we all hear this, we're like, okay, it's, it's going down, it's going down, it's going down. Bran starts to follow Ned up the tower. The Blood Raven, of course, stops Bran, and Bran calls out to his father, and Ned looks around, and I swear, I swear he heard him. Somehow he heard Bran. But anyways, Bran is unable to see what all is going down in that tower because he is pulled out of the vision, and we are all pissed off because... We want to know. We want to have confirmation of R plus L equals J. Another thing we see in this episode is a quick little scene of Sam and Gilly on a ship on the way to the Citadel, and Sam tells Gilly that he is going to send her and little Sam to Horn Hill to be taken care of by his mother and sister. It's a really sweet scene, especially all the funny scenes where Gilly is trying to explain to Sam how she was confused by the C, the word C before she learned to read and Sam is all getting seasick and she's just trying to kind of humor him and get his mind off the fact that he's seasick. It's just a cute scene. I love their scenes. It's great. And Sam still has absolutely no idea what's going on back at Castle Black. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about Daenerys in this episode. There's just, there's not a lot of scenes with her in this episode, but all that happened in this episode with her is definitely going to lead to a lot of big things going down. She is brought to the Temple of the Dosh Kaleen, where all the widows of the Great Calls now live after they have lost their husband, and really, they're of no use after all that, which is kind of sucky, actually. If you think about it, they are just kind of thrown to the side, and yeah, that's that. But she is Daenerys Targaryen, and she is not going to stick around for very long. We know this. That's not going to, that's totally not going to be a thing. And Drogon is going to show up and kick some ass, or burn some ass, I should say. Well, yeah, I'm sure it's going to be an incredible scene when he shows up. They are not going to be able to keep Daenerys there very long. It's just not going to be a thing. But I'm really interested to see how all of this plays out with her. All right. So back in Marine, in Daenerys' absence, Varys, Tyrion, Missande, and Grey Worm are still trying to hold things together. We see a scene where Varys threatens this whore who is in league with the Sons of the Harpies, and he threatens her son if she doesn't tell them who is in charge of funding the Harpies. Then we jump quickly over to Tyrion and him having an incredibly awkward conversation with Missandei and Grey Worm, just trying to 
to kill the time while Varys is up to his little task and trying to get that information and it's just so awkward it's funny it's great it's so great he even after he just fails at having a conversation with them he decides to see if they want to play a game and yeah it doesn't look like they really want to play and then Varys shows up and tells them all that the masters of Astapor, Yunkai, with the help of their friends from Volantis, are funding the Sons of the Harpies. So, yeah, that's going to be a lot of trouble trying to shut them down. It's just, especially with Daenerys out of the picture at the moment, it's just going to... Yeah, she needs to come back. She needs to get out of that temple and get her ass back there and kick some ass. Because the entire situation is going to get increasingly worse and the dragons are of course going to get increasingly more hungry and pissed off until she gets back there. So yeah, hopefully she's back very soon. Another thing we see in this episode off in King's Landing are some very interesting scenes, I think. We see the Lannisters take control of Varys' little birds. They are a bunch of children that help Varys give him information and they are paid through sweets. So they are very quickly taken control of and yeah, so now Cersei wants little birds all over the kingdoms getting information, finding out who her enemies are, and yeah, because her enemies are many. And Tommen, I'm sure, is going to get dead very soon if she doesn't figure out who wants all of them dead and who is coming next. Another thing we see in King's Landing is Cersei and Jaime, along with Sir Gregor Clegane, zombie dude, Crashing the small council meeting, Elena Terrell, along with Cersei and Jamie's uncle, are there as well. And when Cersei and Jamie arrive, they all shut up very quickly and call the meeting to a close and basically just ditch because they do not want them involved in this meeting. It was a very entertaining scene, especially when Maester Pycelle was going on and on and on about Gregor Clegane and didn't even realize that Cersei and all of them had walked into the room. It was, it was great. It was very awkward and great. One other thing we see in King's Landing is Tommen arguing with the High Sparrow about his mother being able to visit Marcella's tomb and then he's kind of like won over by the High Sparrow and it's very awkward and I'm just like, dude, you're supposed to be the king and smart and you're just so naive. So naive. Okay, so now let's move on to the Hall of Faces and all of the incredible Arya scenes. Oh, yes. They are just so perfect. We see Arya training to be no one once again with the Waif while Jacken observes the entire thing. It was one of the best scenes in the entire episode and at the end of the scene we see her regain her sight. It is so amazing. I didn't expect her to regain her sight that soon. I thought maybe a couple more episodes and then she'd regain it, but hey, I'm all about that. I'm all about that and I cannot wait to see more of Arya kicking ass. Or I should I say no one? Should I not call her Arya anymore? Should I just say no one? Maybe, but I'm not gonna. Now, let's move on to Winterfell and the scene that we all knew was coming, but it still shocked us nonetheless. Well, it shocked me. I mean, it shocked me, but didn't shock me. It kind of broke my heart. But anyways, we see Lord Umber pledging his loyalty to Ramsay, and he offers Ramsay the gift of, wait for it, Rick and Stark, uh, along with Osha. Oh, and Shaggy Dog's head. These direwolves are basically doomed. I feel the only ones left standing now... Wait. Yeah. The only ones left standing are Ghost, Nymeria, and... I can't remember Bran's direwolf's name, but I believe his direwolf is still around. So three of them are still alive. At least I think. But yeah, I did not like seeing Rickon now in the hands of Ramsay because who knows what he's gonna do to him and hopefully he doesn't just toss Osha to his hounds like he did 
his stepmother and baby brother because that would suck and I would be very pissed. The last thing we see in this episode is a really important scene. I'm sure we all saw it coming, but we see Jon Snow hang all of his killers. I mean, well, most of his killers. They show only four of them hung, but of course, Sir Alistair is among them, and yes, Ollie. Ollie is gone. But what's really great about this scene, and that what I really loved about it, was that John really, he stared at Ollie for a moment. Ollie did not have any last words, and right after he stared at Ollie, he just kind of walked over, stared at the rope for, I don't know, a minute. It, it seemed like a minute, 30 seconds to a minute, and then all of a sudden just wham, chopped the rope, and they all hung, and they showed us them gasping for breath and dying, and then their dead bodies, just to give us that satisfaction of seeing and knowing they were really dead. Yeah. And then right after that, Ed walks up to John and says, you should probably burn their bodies. And John says, you do it. John then hands over his cloak. And what he then says to Ed is what really just got me. It was, it's something that is very important because I feel like now things are really getting into motion with John and we're finally going to see a lot of big things go down with him and a lot more character development and hopefully very soon we will see him find out the truth of his parentage. But what he says to Ed is, wear it, burn it, whatever you want, you have Castle Black. And then he walks off a ways and as he's walking through the gates it looks like, he says, my watch has ended. Just, we knew it. I mean, he died, so his watch has ended. And he can go off and raise hell and get a lot of vengeance. And just, I am really excited to see what John does next. There were a lot of incredible scenes in this episode, but I have to say my top three favorite moments in this episode were the Jon Snow moments, the Tower of Joy flashback, because yes, and Arya regaining her sight. This episode was really amazing, and while we didn't get complete confirmation of R plus L equals J, I have a feeling that's gonna come very, very soon. I hope y'all enjoyed this video, and if you did, please remember to comment, like, and subscribe, and I will talk to y'all later. Bye, guys.